Um, yeah, so this, I just love this. I think you need to be an engineer and, and digest it a lot. But I think this came up about when we were chatting in a group and, and you came up with this and went, wow, that really summarises everything we're trying to understand about the personal fat threshold and the role yeah. of insulin. And so do you want to unpack, I think that personal fat threshold is just, it, it blew my mind thinking about diabetes and just, you know, uh, metabolic syndrome and hyperinsulinemia. And it, it really pointed back to the the real solution, which is reducing energy toxicity. So do you want to unpack the personal fat threshold and, and what this little chart means? Absolutely. So every bit of fat that you eat has to be stored somewhere mechanically, like the, the actual carbons in the fat have to go somewhere. And you store fat in your fat cells. So you have a certain number of subcutaneous fat cells on your body, and they all have a diameter. They can go from, you know, maybe 20 microns up to 200 microns. And they get bigger and bigger and bigger. And as you expand them, there is a maximum size they can reach. And as, as they get bigger, they stimulate the production of more baby fat cells. So you have more room to store. Um, some people can make bazillions of fat cells, but some people can't. These are your skinny fat people, like uh, a lot of Asian people or people from India or South Central Asia. They can't make a lot of fat cells. They're never really like on my 600 pound life. So mm -hmm. they, um, as their fat cells get bigger and bigger, they sprout any new fat cells that they can, but there will be a limit to everyone. So eventually mm -hmm. you filled up all these fat cells. Now the fat sort of spills over and has to go into your visceral fat cells. And mm -hmm. so now you get the waist circumference expanding and the apple shape and the insulin resistance because you don't have a really easy, good way to store fat. Eventually you fill up all these fat cells, then fat spills over into ectopic fat. That's when you get fatty liver, fatty pancreas, fat everywhere it's not supposed to be. Mm -hmm. And your insulin's getting higher and higher. Your chronic basal insulin because you have all these all these triglycerides in your bloodstream and you don't have a good place to put them. So like a really, really thin person who's super skinny and dieted down, if they eat a, uh, an oral fat tolerance test, so they drink like a cup of heavy whipping cream, uh, the triglycerides go up in their bloodstream and then boom, the triglycerides are just gone because all your fat cells just suck the fat right out of your bloodstream the first time fun. around. Right. But if you're over fat, you've already ran out of good fat storage places. Those triglycerides just circulate and circulate and circulate and circulate and circulate. And none of the fat cells have any room for them. You can't shove it in anywhere. And you, that's where you start seeing the chronically high triglycerides of hyperinsulinemia and insulin resistance and metabolic syndrome. And that's when you've hit your personal fat threshold. And really, truly, the PFT is where you're so over fat and you have so you've so totally run out of places to store fat. All your fat cells are full. Your muscle is full of fat, intramuscular triglycerides. You can't put fat anywhere. That's when your blood sugar starts going mm. up. And mm. your blood sugar going up and diabetes is like the end stage of insulin resistance and metabolic syndrome. It's the end stage of the personal fat threshold. You've maxed out your fat storage. Now your cells won't even take glucose. Even though gl glucose is toxic, Mm. All your cells are like in complete energy refusal mode because they're filled with fat. Mm. So the biggest problem is that every cell in your body is filled with fat. Your bloodstream is filled with fat. No, no, none of your cells are taking the fat. And now they really don't want glucose. They're like, I'm not taking any, any, any glucose. That's PFT. That's the personal fat mm. threshold. That's what we're talking about. That's what that graphic illustrates. The top of the dam is where you have no place to store any more fat. And we're really talking about fat here, not carbohydrates. Carbs just isocalorically displace fat oxidation. So if I eat, you know, 100 calories of carbs, I'm just going to temporarily not burn 100 calories of fat during that period of time. So but most fat is stored as fat, most of your stored fat comes from dietary fat. And then eating carbs just temporarily displaces fat oxidation isocalorically. So like you're burning fat, burning fat, burning fat, you eat 100 grams of carbs and you and you stop burning 100, I mean, you eat 100 calories from carbs, you stop burning 100 calories of fat until the carbs are gone and then you're back to burning fat again. And, and when you look at it from an oxidative priority point of view, I sort of see it as like you got your body fat, the fat in your blood, then, then your carbs, 
and, and the glucose in your blood and any anything you eat upstream of that is sort of fuel stacked up upstream that if you're if the sponge of your adipose tissue is full it just you know just backs up in the system so you think you know people say you know diabetes is a disease of carbohydrate intolerance but it's really a, a matter of your fat stores are full so you're stuck burning carbs all the time and and they the glucose spills over into the blood because yes fat storage is full it's really a disease of too much fat in your body you know like you know 99 percent of all the energy in your body more than that is fat and most of the energy in your bloodstream you know 10 to 1 more than that is fat and in your cells it's fat it's it's mostly a fat problem where you're over fat and that's simply because animals store almost all of their calories as fat statistically speaking glucose is just the the one thing that we're looking for if you could measure free fatty acids in your blood mm. you'd see these go up way before blood sugar goes up that's why everybody with prediabetes and metabolic syndrome and insulin resistance has high triglycerides for 20 mm. years before they have a high blood sugar mm. um, so it's really a fat fat storage problem and almost all that stored fat comes from dietary fat and that's something that the low carbosphere doesn't really like to say out loud yeah i really like this one I mean, we talk about insulin toxicity but you know let's let's look upstream and what's causing insulin toxicity your insulin is rising because of your energy toxicity because you know you're eating a low satiety nutrient poor diet so i think this is uh just a critical thing to understand when it comes to go, what do I eat to be metabolically healthy? For sure. Um, so, yeah, 